Hey boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a second video on this DCF682 DeWalt powered screwdriver. This is one of my most viewed videos, uh, the review I did on this, and I had a lot of comments on that video and a ton of criticism and some really good positive feedback, which led me to create this second video. A lot of people ask questions about this that I hadn't thought of at the time, and I still, some of them actually are still kind of weird questions to ask, but I'm going to try my best to go over what people have asked for so I can cover them in this video. This is still my favorite tool of all the tools I have. And I, I'm not a brand loyalist to any brand. I, I like a lot of DeWalt products. I like a lot of Makita products. And I have a few Milwaukee type things, uh, but I don't really stick to any brand. I find uh, for me, it really comes down to the kind of batteries I have. And I have more Makita batteries than anything. So I end up generally buying more Makita tools, but I also really like DeWalt tools. Uh, so first things first, let's weigh this thing because a lot of people ask, how much does it really weigh? Um, so we're, we'll talk about that. I'm going to take off this tip and put it up here. 490 grams, 489. All right, 490 grams. So that's how much it weighs. Go ahead and convert that to the unit you are most comfortable with, but that's what it is. Anyway, and the battery indicator right there. So you have to press this to do that. And you, you don't press that little uh, thing there. That's not a button. You just kind of press the trigger and it'll show you the battery. I just charged the battery fully for this little um, video that I'm gonna do for you. So hopefully we can answer all your questions. Um, okay, next question was, <laughs> believe it or not, um, People wanted to know how much torque it has, um, and uh, they didn't believe the spec necessarily on, on the DeWalt site. So here's what I've come up with. I'm gonna put a bit in here that basically gives me a hex bit on the other end, and then I've got this torque screwdriver. Okay, this is not gonna be the most exact method. And I found that if I put this somewhere between about 25 to 30 inch pounds of torque, Okay, I can, I can still turn, well actually, maybe not, there we go, I can still get it to turn. So if I were to guess about 26 to 28 inch pounds of torque, definitely not 30 if this thing is accurate, definitely not 30 inch pounds of torque, it doesn't give that much, but it, it seems to do a pretty good job at least with 25 inch pounds of torque. And that's assuming that this unit is accurate. This is a fat wrench. I use this for working on rifles and things like that. It's actually been a really great tool for me. I really like it. I think it's very accurate, but uh, you know, it's not a digital unit and it's not, uh, I, I don't regard it as a super high precision unit. I, I like to be able to dial things down to less than 20 for, for sensitive stuff that I might break. That's why I have this. So that's that, that's regarding torque and then, People wanted to know, can it drive a screw through? Um, and so I didn't know the answer to that because I would never use it for this, okay? But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a Torx bit on there with a three inch Torx uh, screw. This is a construction screw. And we're gonna see if we can go two pieces of uh, two by four. So I'm not gonna use that hole there, but, uh, but I'm just gonna go through these two here. And you be the judge. So I can get most of the way through there, but not all the way, okay? That is almost the full length of that two by four, or uh, so one and a half inches or so. That's pretty impressive for just the powered screwdriver, I think, you may not think so, but let's do this. Um, yeah, so that went almost all the way through. Um, the other question was, and this was the question I, I never thought I would get asked about a screwdriver, can it drill? Well, we're about to find out if it can drive an eighth inch drill bit through a piece of two by four. So I'm gonna just do it on the side here and see if that works. Okay. 
Okay, so it works just fine. And it's actually a good precision way to do drilling, if you ask me. And that's what the guy was asking for. I think he was doing some RC cars or something like that. And he wanted to know if he could use this to do some precision drilling. And what's nice with this unit is you can do some very fine torque. Like, so you can kind of go very slow if you wanted to. Or you can go very fast if you want. Okay, so yes, it can do drilling, but of course you're gonna need quick connect bits. And I'll put a link to the ones I own, and I really love these bits that I also bought from Amazon. I'll put a link to that in the description. But if you have those, I don't see any reason why you can't drill. Now, I am pretty certain that you're not gonna be able to do larger size holes because they're gonna need uh, larger size drilling. So this is a 2364th bit. Let's see how it does with that. I'm not expecting a whole lot. Yeah, so it binds pretty quickly. But, I mean, you know, again, it wasn't meant for this sort of work. You guys are making me ruin my tool um, by your questions. So that's that. Um, and then <laughs> you wanted to see it actually drive a screw, which I feel like I've now done. I'm not gonna do it again. I've already done that with this. What I really like doing with this tool, which I uh, admittedly didn't really demonstrate, is you know uh, things like electrical sockets and uh, electrical covers and stuff like that. So let me show you that real quick. Okay, we've all had to do this, you know, remove a wall plate or a socket or something like that. So for, for stuff like that, I find this is like the right tool because I've got a magnetic bit here. Hopefully you can see past my hand. Oops. What I like is that you can start slow so you're not going at full speed as you undo the screw because that takes a little bit more torque and you kind of want to go a little, little slow to make sure you're grabbing the screw, which I'm not right here because my, my bit is actually a little too thick for this work. Yeah, so that's really why I like this tool. I've got a little paint, whoever painted this. Um, didn't remove the wall plate before they did the paint, which sucks, but you get the idea. Then I put that back and the last bit, I just used the actual screwdriver, not the power, not the power um, to, um, to tighten the screw. So it's perfect for, for little, little jobs like this that normally take a long time to do. And I know uh, a screwdriver is more than ample for something like this, but I find this saves me all kinds of time, especially if I have to change out like 15 sockets or something like that. It's just nice to be able to do it quickly. If you have the right bits, it helps. <laughs> I don't exactly have the perfect bit for this on hand right now. There you go. Uh, so that's an example of me using it in action. So hopefully that quells your uh, curiosity for whether or not it works in doing its very primary job, which is to loosen and fasten screws. Okay, lastly, I wanted to go over the importance of having the right bit set with you. Now, you just noticed that I didn't have a, a thin enough bit for the electrical connector, and I, and I probably have one somewhere in the garage I can find. But wanted to cover this bit kit that, uh, that well, it doesn't come with it, but that DeWalt, uh, you can buy from DeWalt. And I really just absolutely love this. I think for the value, it's um, phenomenal. Uh, I think this was like 12 bucks or something like that when I bought it. And I'll leave a link to a similar one. I don't think they carry this exact one anymore, but they're all pretty similar. Um, what comes with a bunch of stuff, as you can see, I'll get a little bit of a closer look. But I want to cover a couple of ones that you may not use every day, which I really encourage you to use. First of all, if you're working on any of your uh, HVAC equipment, these are the two you want. Um, so you got a quarter and a five, five eighths, five sixteenths. Yeah. 
So most of your HVAC stuff, that's what it has uh, on it. And so you don't need any other tool. You just grab this and maybe that and that, and you go up to your HVAC and you can undo all of those screws in, in just a second. So let's go see that real quick. Okay, now here I am uh, near my furnace and I put the quarter bit here and you see how quickly I can operate this and just uh, open, open the furnace with the right bit, right? Now, otherwise you would have to grab like a wrench or something like that and it, it just, it, this is a lot easier guys. Having the right bit to work with is, is key. I'm having a hard time focusing on this thing. Yeah. Anyway, so I think that's one. The next bit that I absolutely love is this guy. Now you may have seen this and not known what it is, okay? So this bit is a, is a kind of a special bit that anyone should be able to use. It's got a magnetic collar for grabbing your screw and then your actual bit goes through that to drive it. That way you don't drive, drop your screw as you're driving so I'll demonstrate to you this again. This is not the right tool for driving screws, okay? But I'll just demonstrate it and that will show you that this tool is capable of doing that. Sorry. You just put it in like that. And then we're gonna take a piece of our two by four. It's a nice drywall screw. I'm just gonna put that on top there See, it holds it in place. And now, beautiful. And the speed at which I can do this when I have something like that, whoop, <laughs> of course. I can do a one hand kind of drive where I don't have to hold the screw in place. So essentially what you do is you, you hold it like that with the bit sticking out, you load your screw on top, just like that. It automatically brings the collar up to grab your screw. So now it's beautifully centered. So I highly recommend that if you're considering this, that you pair it up with that set or similar, okay? Because these bits will make your life a hell of a lot easier. I also do recommend that if you're thinking of drilling with this, okay, which again, I don't recommend, but if you're thinking of drilling with this, I do recommend this set that I did a review on separately, but I'll leave a link to this and maybe the review also in the description. This is a really great set of quick release bits uh, or quick connect or whatever you want to call this by Come Aware. Um, Anyway, I hope that this time we answered your questions, but I do want to address one other thing. In that other video, I called the way that DeWalt has figured out how to make this move so precisely and accurately and without error, a bit of black magic. And a lot of people called me an idiot for not knowing what was in there. It's not that I don't know that there is some axial uh, gyroscopes in here and probably an accelerometer or two, okay? I know that, but there are very few devices out there with all of those technologies that have been able to get something in, in a, a really nice ergonomic um, uh, fashion with a good price point, you know, under a hundred bucks that is as accurate as this, that works in all the different axes, okay? And, and it does it flawlessly every time. Now I could, I could literally go from screwing in that direction to that one or upside down, move, right? So it's got a three axis gyro in here, but it's the implementation of it, right? It, it's never, it's flawless, it works really well. It's so good when you're working like underneath something like in a crevice of your house or underneath your car or something like that. And you just need that extra like angle where you're kind of blind and you just want to be able to click, click a button and turn the screw one way or the other. You don't have, you don't have room to like wrench. You just want to barely turn your wrist and have it go. It's irreplaceable for something like that. That's why it's still my favorite tool. I've had this for several years now and it hasn't broken on me. Now, a lot of people did comment that, that theirs broke. Not a lot of people. Some people commented that theirs broke. 
Invariably, they also said another thing in the post that made me think it wasn't this one. They said things like, well, it also bends in the middle and you can use it as like an angle tool. Well, this one doesn't do that, okay, guys? This isn't that specific model. I know there's a model that does bend. That one might break more. This one hasn't done that to me. And you noticed I just put a lot of torque on it, um, 30, almost 30 inch pounds, uh, and uh, it, it didn't buckle under that and it hasn't buckled in the many, many years I've owned it. And DeWalt is still selling this tool. Plus, you know, you've got your, your manufacturer warranty and things like that that can go along with that. Um, and it also, by the way, it also has a little lock down here that's unlocked. You can lock it so you don't accidentally run your battery out if it's sitting in your toolbox and pressed. I recommend that if you're leaving it in a toolbox. I don't leave it in the toolbox. It's always sitting on my shelf here. Um, hopefully that answered all your questions. I look forward to your comments. Uh, it's always nice when you can keep them constructive and positive, but I know a lot of you uh, just can't help it. You just can't help it. So bring it on. I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you want to see other stuff having to do with this specific unit, I'm happy to do a third video, but I'll wait until there is enough stuff to do with it. Uh, um, nothing obscene, but, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy to indulge you. Um, okay, leave your comments, click that like button, click the subscribe button, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in.